Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. 1090 Jake, man, I'm rocking with y'all. Let y'all rocking with me. And if y'all rocking with me, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Welcome to the channel if you're new. But hey, let's get it, right? This video is going to be about how to escape prison mentally. Not actually. Well, I'm not telling y'all how to jump the gate. I'm not telling y'all how to kidnap somebody and take their fucking car and drive off. None of that. Nothing crazy. This is going to be about how to escape prison mentally. And what I mean by that is the ways that people manipulate their mind and take themselves out of the reality, which is prison. For me, one of the things that really used to take me away from prison was music and was reading. Music more so when I was on the compound. If I was in an actual dorm, whether it be open bay, whether it be a cell, when you put that music on, it kind of gives you a chance to zone out. And I really didn't like listening to music on the yard or even in a dorm that wasn't celled because I kind of feel like you're at a disadvantage. You can't hear what's going on. I just, I didn't like it. I like to be able to hear everything. I like to be able to be aware of my surroundings. So music, while I was working out, I didn't really do it. But when I was in the cell, I would always listen to the music because you can have, you know, your face to the door when you work out push-ups. You can see if someone's coming. And just the music, you, you get into it. You get into it. Certain lyrics will make you feel certain ways. The beat, the vibe of the song It'll pull different strings on you. Aggressive songs, you're thinking aggressively, you want to work out, you want to get strong in case anybody tries you, you're able to take them out, whatever. But then you get onto the slower songs and you start thinking of women, you start thinking of family, you start thinking of love, you're thinking about things that you miss, you know what I mean? You got the club songs, you're thinking about all the good times that you had and you're thinking about the good times you're going to have when you get back out. But for me, the reading was even better than the music. And I've probably done about a year in confinement out of my three year bid. Confinement is never easy. We're actually not even allowed to have books in confinement. We can't have anything. So if you're caught with a book, they usually slay the book, they'll rip them up, they'll throw them, whatever they do. And the way we keep the books in circulation is really just from fishing it or passing it to someone like an orderly that's a run around or whatever. But we're not supposed to have the books. Some offices will trip about it more than others. Some of them are just dickheads. They'll go inside of your mat, rip all the stuffing out of your mat looking for a book that won't even be a book. They'll bring you back into your cell because they'll put you in the shower for showers when they flip you. You'll have all your property laid out on the floor, all your pictures. They don't walk on them, stomped on them. Sometimes they throw your pictures in the toilet. And uh, if they find a book, sometimes they don't even confiscate the book. They just rip it up and leave it on the floor. So when you come back into your cell with your bunkie, both of y'all shit is just, you know what I'm saying? It's dumped together in a pile and you got to separate it. I don't know. It makes you feel some type of way. It really does. You feel, you feel degraded. You feel angry. You feel aggression. You feel like when you get out, you want to come back and pull up on these CEOs as they're doing shift change in the parking lot. And just let them have it. You know what I'm saying? Like it fills you with so much rage inside when these people abuse their power for no reason whatsoever other than the fact that they can't do it. And they say if you truly want to test a man's character, give him power. And it's true. It changes everything. But for me, I never discriminated against any genre of books, even in the county. For me, my preference was the thickest book I could find. That's actually how I got into Game of Thrones. I never watched Game of Thrones once. I found them in County, the actual book. It was the thickest book in there. And I started reading it. And Game of Thrones is fucking confusing because every different chapter is a different character. So you kind of got to like really remember what the fuck is going on. Sometimes you got to read a couple chapters back and remind yourself who so-and-so is. But... When you read these books, certain books are literally like movies. And I never discovered that until prison. I used to hear people tell me about it. You know, oh, the movie's way better than the book. Oh, da, da, da. Like, all right, you fucking nerd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not reading that shit. 
But in prison, I understood it because the way they're able to get in depth, the detail of the story, when you watch something, you'll see somebody, you know, in a scary situation in a movie, they're sweating, they're running, you see them breathing heavy. But when you read it, the details are even more vivid to the point that you feel it. You imagine yourself in their shoes. And that is what I feel is the difference between a movie and a book. In a book, you imagine it's you. In a movie, you just watch the person. Now, my favorite author while I was in prison was James Patterson. Any James Patterson book, I was on it. And I mean, I bang these books out in like a day. And these are pretty thick books, you know what I'm saying? Uh, anything Alex Cross, anything like that. I was all over it. The murders, the detective, you know what I'm saying? Like just the crime puzzles. That was my favorite, hands down. And then I started reading Stephen King. I remember I read one book and it was a horror book and it actually had me feeling like, oh shit, what's going to happen next? You know what I'm saying? What's going to happen next? It was about these girls that went camping and they went to this haunted campground and there was cannibals that lived in the area. The book was just amazing. I had my bunkie read it. It was fire. And it got to the point where certain books are actually valuable. People will rent out their book for money. People will get robbed over their books. But I mean, I would read anything. I read Westerns, romance, anything that I could find. I read it. I had Jay-Z's biography sent in to me through my aunt. Um, I would just get so into these books and just not, you know, fictional things. I would read biographies. I would read anything that I could learn from. I would read about religions. I even started reading the Bible just for the fact that I wanted to understand what the fuck it was talking about. And all that, these, how, what, like the weird way they talk in the Bible, it kind of took me a second to cling on to it. But I was interested in studying different religions. Not because I wanted to pick what suited me the best, but I wanted to find a middle ground between all religions. I wanted to find what was in common between the Bible and the Quran. And, you know, Buddhism and things of that nature, because I feel that the truth must lie somewhere in the middle. But getting into these stories and getting into these books without picking and choosing which one I wanted to read it, it opened up my vocabulary. It opened up my eyes to a lot of things. It showed me, you know, when I simply focus on one genre or when I simply only listen to one style of music, I find myself thinking within that one style. So if I listen to something negative that's all about killing people, that's all I'm really thinking about. And it gets to a point where that's all I want to watch. That's all I want to see. That's all I want to hear. And it all falls back on to the extended day creed, which we learned at the JIT camp. Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your feelings. Watch your feelings, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, it becomes your lifestyle. Watch your lifestyle, it controls your destiny. And I realized the more I fed into one specific thing, the more I became that. The more I listen to the crazy music and now I want to act like the crazy music and now I'm living like this, now I'm getting punished like that. That's how I ended up in prison, wanting to portray a gangster, wanting to become a gangster until my gangsta ass was sitting in a fucking cell and I got everyone around me like, what are you doing in here? Why are you, why is this what you wanted to become? This isn't it, Jit. Why the fuck you in here? When you get out, you need to blow up. You need to do your thing. You need to take off. You need to succeed because I can't go home and you can. And that's the difference. That's what you need to understand. And opening my eyes to a lot of these differences within the books opened my eyes to the differences of people. I found that I was limiting myself to certain groups of people. And if you didn't fit that narrative, I didn't want to talk to you. And even worse, I didn't respect you. Because I felt like you weren't on the same type of time that I was on. Until someone sat me down and really made me understand who to respect and who not to respect. And more so, what to respect about somebody. 
When I went to prison, I only respected the killers until I found out homosexuals were killers, snitches were killers, guys that were being extorted in prison were killers. There was accidental killers. There was child killers. So I understood now this thing that I thought was a major thing when you took someone's life, it put you on a different pedestal. It made you a warrior. It made you stronger. I realized it didn't do any of that. And it was something that can be so easily done. It can even be done accidentally. I realized the person with the most respect is the person with the most knowledge. So my perception through reading these books and reading these different stories that opened my eyes to listening and talking to different people changed my perspective completely about life. And it's crazy that I was able to get all of that understanding just from starting to read different things and starting to put different knowledge inside of my head which made me, when I was released, watch different movies, listen to different music. I found that when I changed the music, I changed my mood. But if I'm in an angry mood and I put on a certain song that will feed that anger, it does nothing but maintain that anger and keep it inside of me and make me want to lash out. Exercise was another way I was able to mentally leave prison because you're in the moment. The focus is building the strength. But for me, I don't so much focus on the physical aspect of working out. I work out as a robot. I do the routine, but my mind is in another place. It's almost as if I try to form a dream while I work out. Whatever it is, the squats, the push-ups, the dips, the pull-ups, I play all these stories in my head to take my mind off of the workout to take my mind off of the repetitions, to just do it, to just keep going. And it's almost like I'm dreaming while I'm awake. It's almost like an out-of-body experience. I'm here, but I'm not here, if that makes sense. And it's these little things, these little tricks, these little ways of escaping the reality of prison that was able to help me blend my time, especially in confinement, where days had to turn to weeks, had to turn to months, had to turn to a year. When you're told you have over 200 days in confinement and you look at a calendar and there's roughly 30 days in each month, it's difficult to grasp how many days on that calendar you're looking at inside of this small cell where you can touch both walls with your arms out, where you're going to get new bunkies every time and you don't know what the situation is going to be. Sometimes you don't want to relax. Sometimes you don't want to have the out-of-body experience because you don't know what type of time this person is on until you've established some form of trust or respect and an understanding that this person isn't going to do anything crazy to you while you're in this cell and you're not going to have to do anything to them. So there was times when I couldn't put my mind in this peaceful place. And that's why when I did find that time, I cherished it. I appreciated it more than anything. I remember my grandmother would send me spiritual readings. I remember she sent me lyrics one time to all different kinds of music. Music that I wanted. Boosie, Lil Wayne, Gucci. But she would also send me Bob Marley, Bob Dylan. She would send me all types of music. The Beatles, everything. And I had a Jamaican bunkie at the time, and we would go through all of these songs together, enjoying the poetic art that was these lyrics, saying them, singing them. It was so helpful with getting through that time, and it was truly an escape from prison. And it's something that I'm actually disappointed in because I stopped reading when I was released. And it's something that I really want to get back into and start taking the time out of my day to sit down and enjoy that peace. Even though I'm in the free world, I think it's helpful for the human mind to still have that release, you know, exercise, being a natural antidepressant, just having that thing that you sit down and you are by yourself and out of body where your reality is not where you are currently at. It's peaceful. It's an escape. But hey, it's 1090J. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.